I left Adam with a few words of my own. These include brother, wedding, congratulations. <laughs> Granted, not the most exciting and well thought out words, but nevertheless, I'll now elaborate. Brother, since we were kids, and still to this day, the three of us have had some fairly bloodthirsty nicknames for one another. I, being the youngest, was Baby. Adam, Fatty, as is clearly evident, as he stands before you, <laughs> has to read this out, word for word, <laughs> in front of you all. And finally, Stephen was step hen, a mispronunciation of his Christian name. We were pretty witty. <laughs> but joking aside, Stephen, uh, you've always been there for Adam and I. And I'm thrilled that we've added a sister to our family. Especially as we get to pick an awesome nickname for her now. <laughs> <laughs> On to the second word, wedding. You're all gathered here for the same reason, to celebrate Captain Steve's wedding. I'm gutted I can't be there, not least of all because I hate missing out on free food and alcohol. <laughs> I hope you all have a wonderful day, and that no one becomes overly intoxicated and makes a fool of themselves. Except for the group. That would be okay. <laughs> Finally, congratulations. Stephen Cat. Congratulations, I wish you both a wonderful day and a wonderful rest of your lives. I'm sure you'll have a, a long road ahead of you, and I hope you enjoy every step of the way. So concludes my official duties. I can get on with embarrassing Steve and making Cat regret the, the uh, vows she's <laughs> just taken. And I'll be honest, getting the call from Steve and being asked to be his best man came as a bit of a surprise. Not least of all because he called me immediately after popping the question at 7am on Saturday morning. I want you to think about that. <laughs> Steve had got, got cut up, taken her out for a romantic walk around the lake, picked his spot, got down on one knee, asked the all important question and come home. Given me a call and asked me to be his best man. Before 7am. <laughs> I don't know how you did it. I, if I had it, I'd take my hat off to you. I can barely get Jen to commit to a cup of tea until about 10 o'clock. <laughs> now, I, um, it wasn't just having my beauty sleep interrupted that uh, caused such surprise. With only 16 months between us, to say the least, Steve had a somewhat um, strained childhood relationship. When we weren't affectionately referring to each other as Fatty and Step Hen, uh, we were constantly competing, bickering, arguing, trying to get one another in trouble. Uh, racing to milestones and just generally not being very nice to each other. In fact, I took the opportunity when I was preparing for this speech to um, raid our respective memory boxes. These are boxes that our mother has retained for the course of our lives, 
um, with bits of schoolwork, interesting uh, facts, our first pairs of shoes, that sort of thing. Uh, the purpose of which is essentially uh, for this sort of an event to provide phenomenal embarrassment. <laughs> there used to be uh, three of these boxes, one for me, one for Steve, one for Tom. There's now two. Because I was left unsupervised, there's two and a, a small pile of ash. <laughs> so in a couple of years' time, I think I'm probably safe. But I was reading through um, the various documents, and I did uh, happen across a couple of bits of schoolwork, which really, um, they talk about our, our childhood relationship and how fantastic that was. Uh, first was a story, undated. I'll read it to you now. <laughs> Once upon a time, there were some children called Adam and Tom, and there was a cat as well. One day, I went in a cave and I found a lamp, so I started to clean it. And then a genie appeared, and he said, I will grant you three wishes. I wish Adam would stop bullying me. <laughs> <laughs> then I wish Tom would stop making me in trouble. <laughs> then I wish I would stop having to chase Adam. Then I went home, the wishes came true, and I was happy. <laughs> <laughs> a one-off, clearly, a bad day. <laughs> and I found a, a, a play that Stephen had written laid out the characters, the scene, and, you know, appropriately um, laid out on, on the page. Dated April uh, 1995, so Stephen would have been seven. Characters. Adam, Dad, and Mum, and a cat, and me, and Tom. <laughs> Setting on a dessert. <laughs> I'm, I'm fairly confident I'm going to the desert. <laughs> Plot. Once I lived in a palace with my mum and dad and Adam and Tom. Once I went into the desert, then Adam came, started bullying me. <laughs> then I went, and I wished he would stop bullying me. <laughs> the end. <laughs> so, Stephen asked me to be his best man, uh, represent something of a cessation of hostilities, an olive branch, if you will. And it's for this reason that uh, I'm so honoured to have been asked by you, Steve, and indeed, why it's so honourable of you to finally admit that I am the best. <laughs> now, despite our best efforts, Stephen survived his formative years. And as I understand it, when he had moved on to Bangor University, the first time he, or the first time Cat was made aware of him, was um, as he was having a disagreement with his mother. Whether 19 years is too old to receive a goodbye kiss after your first day. <laughs> Okay. If that wasn't a red flag, I don't know what it is. But you look past his apparent fear of public displays of affection, and young love blossomed. It was abundantly clear to all who knew them that these were two people destined to spend the rest of their lives together. And here we are, some six years later, taking the first step in what is going to be a long life together. In fact, it's a step which Steve apparently had had rough plans drawn up for since he was seven years old. And I'll share with you another tidbit from his Friday, 12th of May, 1995. Stephen Harrison. When people get married in a Christian church, you wear a white dress. After the wedding, they have a party called the reception. Steve, I think now you'll probably appreciate there's a little bit more to me. <laughs> But having seen both the documents that Kat had prepared, the level of organisation, and indeed how well today has gone, I think it's safe to assume that was the full extent of Stephen's involvement. <laughs> <laughs> Everything today, I think, is a testament, Kat, to your organisational skills. And it's been a fantastic day and will continue to be a fantastic evening. So congratulations for that. Before I met Kat, I thought Stephen was the most kind-hearted, gentle and loving person I knew. I'm pleased to say that they are equally matched in that regard. And if that is not a recipe for lifelong happiness, I don't know what is. I don't know two nicer people. I don't know two people who deserve each other more thoroughly. Captain Steve, on behalf of everyone here, I wish you all the best, all the health, wealth and happiness. And so, with limited further ado, all that remains is for me to ask you to stand the Babel. Raising your glasses in a toast to Mr. and Mrs. Harrison. Mr. 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 Mr.